Welcome everyone to the on-premise to online pitch deck and the getting started video presentation. This presentation provides an overview about on-premise to online migration program, also referred to in short as the OP2OL migration program. This program is designed to help our customers move from their on-premise CRM implementations to Dynamics Online. Unlike the common approach of doing a row-by-row -row data migration, this program allows everyone to move the backup of their full CRM SQL database into Dynamics 365 Online. In this video, we'll start with an overview of the program, cover the important considerations to make when onboarding onto this tool, touch on process overview and the prerequisites of the program, and then end up with a workshop on how to get you started with your first migration. Let's begin with a brief overview of what the program and the tool has to offer. The on-premise to online migration program was designed to help resolve the previous challenges brought about by the data migration method. With the help of the factory team, this tool provides you with a guided process to move your database from on-premise to online. One can do so seamlessly and also retain the on-premise data after the migration. The migrations are time and cost effective, allowing a customer to use any of the additional resources saved, such as money and time, towards any additional project work needed. To successfully migrate a database, the process is very simple. One starts off by taking a, a backup of the on-premise database. Once you have that backup, upload that backup into the migration service. Within the migration service, we upgrade your CRM to the latest CRM on-premise version. The upgraded database then gets migrated to Dynamics Online. This migration service is all orchestrated via a project hosted under the Lifecycle Service Portal on lcs.dynamics.com. This service is delivered to the factory eligible customers and is provided by the Microsoft factory team who will guide and support you during this process. To ensure success in this program, it is necessary to understand the following things. Understand the abilities of the tool, what the tool can and can't do, understanding the responsibilities of the factory team, and finally, understanding the responsibilities of the customer and the partner within the lifetime of the migration project. Take a minute to review the responsibilities and boundaries before proceeding. Let's go over some important considerations about this migration approach. There are a few things to consider when using this migration service. Start thinking about your transition plans and leverage tools such as the Power Up Solution Checker to validate the existing solutions. Consider how you will transform any SQL dependent solutions, such as reports, store procedures, and integrations. Also review all your existing CRM on-premise plugins and evaluate how they will transition from full trust plugins to sandbox mode. While doing so, Evaluate the current code and make sure to remove any deprecated and unsupported code in your plugins. Consider migrating your existing CRM workflows to Power Automate, Logic Apps, and Azure Functions. Evaluate your existing client code for unsupported code and remove any legacy and deprecated code. Finally, have a UCI transition plan. So consider how you work on transitioning to the unified interface. If you're not sure, visit the Unified Interface Playbook in the Microsoft Docs. Above are a few recommended best practices when embarking in this journey. To ensure success, we highly suggest that you go through our white paper before starting the migration. This will help you understand the requirements and the prerequisites needed for this project. You should try and do your first dry run early to the start of the project. When doing so, be aware that these dry runs a way to catch the potential issues. So during these dry runs, make sure to record any fixes you make to better prepare yourself for the future dry runs. You should also consider doing a cleanup of your database prior to migrating. Finally, have a run book where you can document play-by-play -play all the steps you need to follow come go live. Please include all your mitigations and workarounds of any issues you've encountered.
above shows you the main interaction points throughout the lifetime of a single migration, starting when you create the migration project all the way to when the migration is complete. Take a minute to review this before starting the project. Good. Yeah. Before kicking off your first migration project, review and complete the above prerequisites. Make sure all these are completed prior to starting off your first project. Now that you've completed your prerequisites, we will now go over on how to get you started with your first migration project. To get started, you need to follow the following steps. First, request an LCS preview card. Then add the LCS preview card to activate the preview feature. Once this is done, create an LCS project. Complete the customer information in LCS. And once you've done so, reach out to Microsoft Factory team, letting them know you are done. Proceed then to backup and upload your CRM on-premise database. Then contact Microsoft team and let them know that you are done. Proceed to download and upload the user mapping file, and then contact the Microsoft Factory team, letting them know you completed the step. Finally, once this is all done, Microsoft will complete the migration and then notify you once it's complete. To get started, request an LCS preview code from the Microsoft Factory team. To do so, use the following email address. Everyone using LCS Dynamics Dot com would need to add this preview code into their LCS portal to be able to access all their projects. The preview code will look similar to the following. Microsoft will respond to you with the code for your company. Once you have the preview code, proceed with the next steps. The next step is to add the LCS preview code to activate the preview feature. To do so, you need to log in to lcs.dynamics.com. Make sure the user that is signing in meets the following conditions. The user logging in has to be a user from the same tenant to which you're going to migrate the on-premise environment. Make sure that this user is a global admin or a Dynamics admin in Office 365. Once you're done, navigate to the Preview Feature Management tab and proceed to the next step. Once you've clicked on the Preview Feature Management tab, add the LCS preview code that was provided to you by the Microsoft Factory team. To do so, click on the plus sign and paste the preview code in the code text area. Next, create an LCS project. Once the preview feature is activated, to do so, navigate to lcs.dynamics.com. Click on the plus sign to start a new project then provide a name for the migration project. Add the product name by selecting Microsoft Dynamics CRM Dynamics 365 Customer Engagement. Select Microsoft Dynamics CRM for the product version. Select CRM on-premise to D365 online migration for the methodology. Then finally, select Create to create the project. As explained before, once you navigate to lcs.dynamics.com, click on the plus sign to create the new project. This menu will show up once you click on the plus sign. Complete the name, the product name, the product version, the methodology, and then select create to create the new project. Once the project is created, all you need to do is complete the customer information. To do so, click on 1.5 Enter CRM Organization Details, then select Customer Information. <laughs> now it's time to complete the customer information. To do so, fill in the following fields. The company name, which is the name of your company. The organization name, which is the CRM organization name on premise. Note, this should not contain any spaces the version which is the CRM version for your on-premise deployment. 
the SQL version, which is the SQL version for your on-premise deployment, the CRM region, which is the region where the D365 sandbox you will overwrite resides, the sandbox organization name, which is the organization name for the sandbox you wish to overwrite. This would be the sandbox you created earlier on in the prerequisite stage. For example, if the org URL is contoso.crm.dynamics.com, type Contoso in the text area and then click Check Sandbox Organization Name. The database name, which is the database name as seen on the on-premise SQL Server, it should end with underscore MSCRM. The database backup file name, which is the name of the database backup file name, in .bak format. As an example, if the name of the database on premise SQL Server is Contoso underscore MSCRM, name your backup file as Contoso underscore MSCRM dot BAK. The name of the database should match the name of the backup file. And remember, these names are case sensitive. As shown above, when you click on Enter CRM Organization Details and then select Customer Information, you will be presented with the following screen. The following fields are mandatory for you to complete in Customer Information. Company name, organization name, version, SQL version, CRM region, sandbox organization name, database name, database backup file, migration type, and then the migration date. Keep in mind, migration type has two options, dry run and production. Use the dry runs for all your dry runs and the production for your final go live production migration. Once you've done, contact Microsoft, letting them know that you've completed the customer information section. To do so, email the following email address. The factory team will then respond with a list of steps, including a request to add a list of factory users into the LCS project. To add the users, go to the project users tile and click on the plus sign to invite user. Add the users by adding the email and selecting project owner for the project security role, as shown below. After you've reached out to Microsoft Factory team and they've gotten back to you, it is now time to backup and upload the CRM on-premise database. Once you have taken the backup of your CRM on-premise database, proceed to upload the database. To upload the database, you need to go to your LCS project, select step 1.7 and click on create and save a connection string to get that right key. Copy the right key. If the key has expired, contact Microsoft using above shown email address. Note, the key is typically valid for about 24 to 48 hours. Once you have a valid key, go to Azure Storage Explorer, right-click on Storage Account under Local and Attached, and select Connect to Azure. Now, select the Use a Shared Access Signature SAS URI option. Click Next, paste the right key you copied in Step 2 into the URI, and click connect and upload the database. No, once you are connected, you only have 48 hours to upload the database to the Microsoft Storage account. After you've completed step seven, email Microsoft letting them know that you've completed the backup and upload CRM on-premise database. To do so, email the following email address. Once you have reached out to the Microsoft Factory team, they will respond back to you asking that you download and upload the user mapping file. To do so, you need to go to the LCS project. Once you're in the LCS project, click on 1.7 and select Create and Save a Connection String. You will see the following screen. Click on Right Key and copy the right key. If the right key is expired, contact Factory team and let them know so that they will renew the right key for you. 
go to the Azure Storage Explorer, right click on the storage account under local and attached and select connect to Azure. Select the use a shared access signature SAS URI option and click on next. Now paste the right key that you copied in step two into the URI and click connect to upload the add user CSV file. Once you're connected, you will only have 48 hours to upload the add user CSV to the Microsoft storage account. Once you've connected to the storage account, download the add user CSV file and proceed with the following steps. Open the add users.csv file. For each user, set the target user column to the user principal name of that user in Office 365. Make sure that at least one record for an admin user has the is local admin column set to yes. Save the file as add users.csv. Remember the file name is case sensitive and needs to match exactly as specified. Now upload the file back to overwrite the one in the storage account. Once the upload is complete, mark 4.2 map CRM on premise users to Office 365 as complete. And then run the validate AD users file, which is under 4.3 under run AD users file validation service. If this completes without an error, proceed with the next step. Once you have completed step nine and uploaded the AD users.csv file, reach out to the Microsoft Factory team and let them know that you've completed and uploaded the AD users.csv file. To do so, contact them using the following email address. Now that you've completed step 10, the Microsoft Factory team will proceed with the migration. Once they've completed the migration, they will proceed to reach out to you. Please wait for the confirmation before starting to use the migrated environment. 